A key advantage of React Native is that it brings the Flexbox layout natively and consistently across the different platforms. Now, if you've already experienced Flexbox from the web, then there are some minor differences, which are actual improvements, which we will look at towards the end of the lesson. But if you've never experienced Flexbox before, then I'm excited to demonstrate its key features. So let's jump right in. Now we start off with the familiar empty React Native application. And one thing that you might have noticed before is that we are using a height and width of 100% to make sure that our root view, which you can see has a slate background color, occupies the entire screen. Now, of course, if we remove this height and width, it requires no space and therefore you cannot see it anymore. Now, an alternative way of taking up the entire space that is provided by a parent is by using Flexbox. Now, React Native sets up an app level Flexbox container for us already. So if we want the safe area view to completely expand into that app level component, we can specify a flex property of one. And what this means is that it's going to ask the parent to give it all the space that it has available and therefore it fills up the entire screen. Additionally, the view components within React Native are flex containers themselves as well. So if we were to add another child to the safe area view and give that the flex property of one, that'll expand completely into the safe area view. And you can see that with this yellow view component right now. Now the flex property is actually consumed by the parent as a ratio. So if we were to have two view components, both with the flex of one under the safe area view, since they both have a flex ratio of one, they would get an equally distributed amount of the total space. Now, if you change the flex value of the green view to be two, then it would get twice the amount of space as the yellow view. Now the space is distributed amongst all the children. So if you were to have another view child with the color pink and a flex value of three, then the total amount of space will be distributed into six equal parts. One of them would go to yellow, two of them would go to green and three of them would go to pink. Another feature offered by the Flexbox is the flex direction property, which determines the main axis along which the children would be laid out. Now the default flex direction within React Native is column, which means that the children are laid out in a single column, but you can change it to other values. For example, by specifying flex direction to be row, the children are laid out in a single row. We can even reverse the order of the items in the layout by specifying row reverse. Similarly, we can lay them out in a single column in the reverse direction with column reverse. And of course, as you've mentioned, the default value is column. A key feature of the Flexbox layout is its fine grained control over alignment on both the main as well as the cross axis. So let's demonstrate that with code examples. To demonstrate alignment both in the main as well as the cross axis, we will create a simple component called square, which will have a minimum height and width of 100 as well as a color that can be specified as a prop to the square component. To our root safe area view, we will add three squares with different colors, one with the color yellow, one with green, and one with pink. Our square components do not specify a flex property and therefore only take up as much space as they need, which in our case is being constrained by the min height of 100. Our safe area view is taking up the entire screen thanks to that flex one, and the squares are being laid out one at a time, 100 pixels each, starting at the top of the safe area view. We can change the alignment along the main axis, which in our case is column, by using the justify content property. For example, if we set it to center, the items will be laid out in the center of the column. It takes other values as well. For example, if we set it to flex end, then the items are laid out starting at the end of the container. If you set it to space between, then the items are spaced out so that the remaining empty space goes between the individual items. And the default value is flex start, which is the behavior that we saw previously with items being laid out starting at the top of the container. Notice that we said that justify content specifies the alignment along the main axis. The corresponding property for the cross axis is align items. Now, as you mentioned, the main axis by default is a column and therefore the cross axis is going to be a row and the alignment along the row axis will be determined by the align items property. Right now, the items are being stretched into the individual rows, which is the default. But if we set align items to be center, you can see that the items are now centered, taking up their minimum width, which is 100. Just like justify content, align items takes other values as well. For example, flex end, and now the items are aligned at the end in the individual rows. We can also align them to the start of the individual rows with flex start. And of course, if we wanted to, we can explicitly specify that default value as well of stretch with the individual items stretch into their respective rows. 
with these two simple properties of justify content and align items, we can actually achieve the holy grail of layout, which is center center, with the items are laid out in the center of the parent component. Now, in addition to the alignment for the cross axis being specified by the parent, the individual items can actually overwrite this value by using the align self property. To demonstrate that, let's create another copy of the square component, but this time do it inline so we can specify additional styles. Right now it is following what the other squares are following, that is an alignment of center, but we can provide a different alignment just for this particular blue square by using align self, for example using it to move the square to the start of the parent row. Similarly, we can move it to the end of the row and even stretch it if that is what we wanted to achieve by using a line self of stretch. Now there is more to the Flexbox layout, but these are most of the properties that you will use in real world coding. And just to increase your comfort a bit further, let's build a tic-tac-toe style grid. Now the visual reference for the grid that we are trying to build is going to be a 3x3 grid where the individual squares can be circle, or cross, or empty. A key thing to note over here is that you can actually think of this as three rows where each row has three individual squares. We start off with an empty safe area view, which has flex one and justifies and aligns the items in center center. We start off by building the smallest block component, which is going to be a square. It is going to take a text prop, which can be used to pass in a cross or a circle or a dash. It's going to have a fixed height of 100 by 100. It's going to have a nice green border and it's going to align the text in center center. And for the text, we are going to use the text component with the font size of 24 and the color yellow. Just to get a reference, we will place an example square within our safe area view. And once this renders, you can see that this is exactly what we want our individual squares to be. Now the safe area view right now is already in a column layout, which is the default. So if you were to place another square, you can see that it is laid out in a nice column. We want the first three squares to be laid out in a row. So in order to do that, we create a new view component and specify the flex direction to be a row. And within that, we create three squares. And now you can see we have a reference single row. We can add another row by creating another view with flex direction row containing three squares. And at this point, you can probably complete this example yourself. We add another view with flex direction row with three squares to get the final nine by nine grid that we wanted to create. Now, as you mentioned, if you are already familiar with Flexbox for the web, then there are some technical differences with Flexbox on React Native versus Flexbox on the web. But once you understand them, you will see that it is quite intuitive and perhaps the React Native version is a bit better. The first difference is the default value for the flex direction property. In React Native, the children are laid out in a column by default, whereas on the web, the default direction is row. Most commonly, we want children in a vertical layout and the flex direction of column just makes sense. The next property is align content and please don't confuse it with align items which is something that we saw in this lesson. Align content is something that only takes effect when items start to wrap and the web in this particular case starts to stretch the items but I think it makes most sense to align them to the start which is the default in React Native. Flex shrink is a property that determines how much an item can be shrinked when space starts to run out. And this is actually a source of much frustration for web developers because the default for the web is one, which means that items start to shrink beyond their content. Whereas on React Native, it is zero. So you don't have to worry about items shrinking beyond their content. And one final difference, and this is something that will be caught by TypeScript at compile time anyways, is the flex property only takes a numeric value in React Native Whereas on the web, you can use it to provide a shorthand string as well. And this is again a good thing because on the web, you can end up with conflicting values in the shorthand versus the named properties. And that's it for this lesson on Flexbox. You can continue your React Native journey over here. Thank you for joining me. Smash the like and subscribe for more content like this. And I will see you in the next one.